What's going on everybody? Jay Glees here and I am finally back from LA. The Mortal Kombat 11 reveal was one amazing experience. There's so much that I want to cover, I'm not going to be able to cover it all in one video. In this video, we're going to talk about the actual reveal and some of my basic thoughts about the gameplay of Mortal Kombat 11. We will be getting into some other videos that are a little bit more detailed, so stay tuned for those. Also, I want to send a big shout out to Life and Death on YouTube. He actually hooked me up with a good amount of high res 60 frames per second footage and I absolutely cannot thank him enough. A link to his channel is down in the description below. Great dude, definitely go over to his channel, check it out. You'll see fatalities, all the intros, all the good stuff that you guys all want to see. So on the day of the reveal, we actually had to meet at a specific point and we actually went on a big charter bus that was shown to have Mortal Kombat 11 along the side. These buses were specifically put together for the event. It was definitely first class. And when I got on the bus, everything was cool. We drove into the event. The line was a bit long, but there were some awesome things to check out, as you can see in the beginning of this video, where there were the different uh, graffiti art of Scorpion, as well as the Mortal Kombat logo and there was Raiden and Fatality across uh, one of the canvases. The anticipation was high going into the event. I was able to actually run into Slayer Hat and K-Dog while I was waiting in line and both of those dudes are awesome dudes. We were talking about the game, kind of things that we wanted to see and what we were expecting going into the event. The anticipation level was so high amongst the group, you could actually feel the tension, the anticipation, the excitement of the crowd and everybody that was there. And that was one of the best things, one of the best parts of the actual experience of going to the Mortal Kombat 11 reveal was being with a group of individuals that share such a strong passion, the same one that you share. And that feeling was contagious amongst the crowd. It was uh, definitely a, a, an awesome and interesting experience. So as we went in, we took a seat, had a look at the reveal, which all of you saw on Twitch. But what I'm really going to talk about are the experiences after that, that you guys didn't really get to experience. So as far as the gameplay goes, there was a gameplay section for everyone that was invited. You got a timer that was next to your PlayStation and you had 20 minutes to play before you had to go to the back of the line again and wait for your turn again. So the play was actually rather limited. Toward the end, the line did die out quite a bit and I was able to play a little bit more. My mindset going in as far as play goes was to understand the gameplay mechanics understand what Scorpion can do as far as his base moveset. I wasn't too locked in on understanding and learning variations and there's a very specific reason for that is because one, it's really not known yet exactly what's going to happen for competitive play for Mortal Kombat, whether they're going to have pre-rendered variations that are going to be the variations that are used for competitive mode or if it's going to be opened up. Right now, as far as the developers have stated that there are going to be variations that are going to be locked in for competitive mode, but it's not set in stone yet, but that's what things are looking like. So I wasn't really too concerned about the variation system, and that's why. I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't want to waste my time on that. I wanted to understand the gameplay mechanics. What's going on in the game? How is movement different? Uh, how to connect combos? How the juggle system works? Like These were all the things that I wanted to learn going in. And when I first went in line and waited, I actually decided to play by myself. So there were sections where you could play against someone else or you could play by yourself. 
And I thought that that would be the best way to initially learn the game. And it definitely worked out in my favor doing that. So I went in, I played against the computer, and I was just checking frame data, checking moves. I was able to, in that 20 minutes, get a basic game plan for Scorpion. I also looked at Sonya, and I looked at Scarlet, and I played a little bit of Baraka, only for about five minutes with those, you know, those other characters, not even. Just to kind of look at their moveset, see what they do. And the variation that I use for Sonya, she actually, you didn't see this on stream, but she has a, a drone in this one variation. And the drone can do a multitude of things. It can extend combos. It can uh, help you stay plus on pressure. I didn't really get to break it down completely, you know, obviously, because there wasn't that much time. But the drone is definitely something that is unique and different. And it's something that's going to take a lot of time. This game is really deep. There's a lot of aspects and components to it that are going to take a, a good amount of time to search through and work through. And I think that's a good thing. I think that will extend the game's life in general. Now, as far as the gameplay mechanics go, I know a lot of people are skeptical of the slower pace of the game. Me personally, I love a you know pace similar to the way that Mortal Kombat 11 plays. I'm really into you know grounded combat spacing footsies etc that type of uh, of gameplay and i know that there are a good amount of mortal kombat fans especially newer fans that really started to compete with mortal kombat x that don't feel that way at all they're very skeptical of the neutral base game plan that they're going with the less mix-up heavy but i will tell you that sub-zero has some nasty 50 50s he has a low starter and an overhead that both lead the combo i don't think that that's going to completely leave the game I just think that they're toning it back a bit. I also like the fact that you don't really get to extend combos, at least not with the characters that I played, without using meter. I enjoy the two bar system, how you have the defensive meter, so you still have your defensive tools, but you also can still accelerate your offense at the same time. And I think that that was something that had to be a focus going in after Mortal Kombat X, where the shared bar really was a hindrance. You almost had to save all of your bar for defense based off of how mix-up heavy the game was. And I think that going this route is a direct result of that. I think that they didn't want to have to handicap a player's offense because they're so worried about how strong the opponent's offense is or, you know, their defense in other words. So a lot of people were, were you know, restraining that bar for defense. And I like the fact that there is a way to get out of combos. Like a lot of people are saying, oh, there's no way to get out of combos. You actually can. There's a flip out. So you can hit down and block and your character will drop out. Uh, but it does lead to a situation where if the offensive player knows that you're going to do that, they can you know, anticipate it, similar to Injustice, not throw a move out and then continue their pressure uh, as you hit the ground. So it's not something that is an automatic breaker where you're bing and you break and you reset the neutral. That's not actually what happens. But you can actually, there were instances where I was connecting spear and when I went to connect spear, the person dropped out and they were actually able to punish me because spear has you know such a long recovery uh, as it whiffs. So there are different you know strategies that people are going to be able to implement with this new mechanic and it can lead, this defensive mechanic can lead to offense. And I think that that's really cool. So it's something that can really turn the tides as far as who has advantage, who is you know changing the pace of the match. It's something that is definitely going to need to be practiced and you're going to have to know when to implement that in certain combos against specific characters. And I think that lends itself to a much broader perspective as far as depth of the game. One cool and interesting mechanic that I did notice that I haven't really heard anyone talk about, but it's something that I utilize immediately as soon as I went into the controller settings. There's a setting to change your input window and you can make it long, which is similar to Injustice. Injustice has a long input window. And what that basically means is, for instance, if I were to poke with down one with Superman and then it hits and I go forward two, because the input window is long, the game registers that down one. And then when the forward two comes out, oftentimes you get the rising grab. So you get an input error because it has a long input window. 
What I was doing is I took my input window and put it to short. And the reason why I did that was because I didn't want that. My inputs are rather precise and I don't need that long input window. For beginners, that might be something that you would utilize and you would like. Makes it a little bit easier to pull the moves off, but it also leads to input errors. Now taking that input window and shrinking it down to short is going to alleviate that because when you would press that down one with your character, if you were next combo is a forward two starter and let's say that forward two is linked to a special move that down one is already erased from the input window memory if you will and all you'll get is your forward two combo so i think that that is something that the developers were definitely listening to the community and i think that's awesome because that was such a problem with injustice 2 a little bit in Mortal Kombat X, but not nearly as much. But in Justice 2, that long input window was killing people. I mean, it was it was absolutely destroying certain situations with certain characters. It actually forced me to stop playing Atrocitus. Atrocitus was a character that I really, really wanted to play. But after noticing that when I land my down one and go into forward two and I get breath, you know, 40, 40 or 30 percent of the time, I can't have that. So I dropped the character literally because of the long input window. So putting this in the game, I think, is absolutely fantastic. So the crushing blow is a unique mechanic that is triggered by doing specific things in a match and linking specific moves in specific situations. And I know that sounds very broad, but just to give you an example, when I was using Scorpion, his down two was a crushing blow that I was able to utilize quite a bit. When I knew someone was gonna go with a standing one on pressure, which is a high, his down two would actually crushing blow and you can launch the opponent into combo. I didn't get to optimize the combo. I didn't have enough time to do so, but I did get to some pretty good combos with Scorpion, but I'll talk about that in another video. Now the crushing blows that are linked to each specific move can only be used once and there is a setting where you can turn on the option to utilize the crushing blow or not. And the way that you utilize it is by holding the button rather than just tapping it. So it can give the person who's controlling the character the choice when to use the crushing blow. Now crushing blows can extend combos, they have different properties, it can give you advantage in certain situations. It's definitely a situation that's gonna need a lot of lab work and a lot of adjusting to in order to actually fully understand it. And again, that just lends itself to more depth to the game, which I think is great. Now the Fatal Blow, which not to be confused with the Crushing Blow, is basically an ultra in Street Fighter 4. That's the way that I think about it. When your health gets low, down to 30% or less, you can use the Fatal Blow, but you can only use it once per match. If it's whiffed or if it's blocked, you can regenerate the Fatal Blow, which is something that I was kind of skeptical at first, but then once I realized that you only get it once per match, I thought maybe that's something that could be okay. And in my limited gameplay time with it, it seemed okay, especially because the Fatal Blow doesn't activate armor within the first couple frames. So if someone's just mashing it, then you can just hit them right out of it. And I think that's absolutely great. So no more of the days of people just like mashing X-ray and, you know, mashing armor moves when you're negative and, you know, armor activating on the first frame. That stuff's gone. So when you're negative, you are negative. And that's something that I really, really enjoy. And I really like that they put that in the game. I think that that's big. It's huge. They're listening to a lot of the majority of the community and they're implementing these changes based off of that input. And I think that that's absolutely fantastic and hats off to NetherRealm for that. The gore, the fatalities, the blood, it's all so over the top in Mortal Kombat 11. My girlfriend was actually like covering her face at times because of how brutal all of the hits not only look but they sound, the crunching, all the sound effects, everything is done so well in that regard. It's gotta be one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen. If violence can be beautiful, this is it. So the defensive bar I was messing with a little bit, trying to think about you know some ways to utilize it. And you can, like I said, drop out a combo, which would cost you two bars. You could actually wake up as well. And you can do that with up two or up three. Up two is like an anti-air type of wake up and it launches for full combo and it is unsafe the grounded which is up three is safe but it doesn't land any type of combo any type of major damage off of it and the wake ups they utilize one defensive and one offensive meter 
meter. So you have to make sure that you're aware of that. And you can't wake up without the defensive meter. So as an offensive person moving in on wake up, it's definitely important to understand what's going on with your opponent's meter so you know their options on wake up. You can actually tech roll back and forth as well. So if you want to roll forward, you can hit flip stance and forward or flip stance and back. And you have these invincible rolls. I like to think of it very similar to smoke in MKX, the phase, it's basically like a phase, that's what it is. Now you can bait it, you can punish it, it's something that isn't foolproof, but if someone's going in for pressure and you roll and they're stuck in recovery, you can punish with a full combo. And I think that that is really cool. If you're a smoke player, that's gonna feel right at home for you. So the last thing gameplay wise that I'm gonna talk about in this video is the Amplify system, which is basically the meter burn system. Now it does have a little bit of a tweak. In the Amplify, each move has a very specific button input in order to amplify the attack. So for instance, with Scorpion Spear, to restand, you have to hit Triangle instead of just hitting the Block button or Meter Burn button. This definitely took some getting used to as I'm very familiar with hitting the meter burn or block button in order to amplify or enhance my moves. So it took a little bit to kind of grasp the muscle memory in order to implement these changes. It's also going to make it more difficult to move from character to character as the amplify is going to be different for everyone. There are also moves in the game that are only available when you have meter to amplify. Garrus, for instance, has certain moves that he literally cannot do without a bar of meter. It's going to be interesting to see how this pans out and if they actually stick with this for the release. I think that utilizing a bar for specific moves will stay there, but I have heard that whether they're going to use the actual meter burn R trigger system or this amplify specific button combination system is still up in the air. So I'm very interested to see how that goes on release. So the last experience that I had at the reveal was pretty awesome. I wound up getting on stage, competing in the King of the Hill, and rose as the King of the Hill champion. Basically, I was the last one left and time ran out. <laughs> I was able to get in some really good matches, played a match against MIT as well as Forever King, and another guy, I wasn't able to get his name, but he was actually a really good Scorpion player as well. All in all, the experience was really awesome, and I'm so thankful to NetherRealm for inviting me to the event. If you have any questions about the game, leave them down in the comment section below. Also, if you're new to the channel, definitely click that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell so you get notified whenever I post new content and there's a ton of content coming. So as always, I want to thank you for checking in. It's Jay Glee signing out and continue to game strong. Oh my god, I love this game! Ooh, trades back and forth and no connections. And the throw! And the victory! Ladies and gentlemen, your King of the Hill champion is from New Jersey! Hey man, you look great in the game. Anything you'd like to say to that around the entire staff that made this possible today? I mean, I've been playing Mortal Kombat my whole life. So, it's just great to see the game. It's polished, it looks good. I'm really, really happy. Very happy, very excited to have you here. Congratulations on being our victor. Ladies and gentlemen, that does it for me today. I need to take a break and get aggressive because I'm exhausted. But this has been a dream come true and one of the best days of my life. Thank you for making it possible. Huge thank you to another round studios. Wonderful games into the entire <laughs> yeah, right MKK.